Hey guys, Justin here, and welcome to our second example video following our course on differential equations. Today's video is gonna be on first order linear differential equations. This is actually the second time I am recording this video, as the first time I recorded it, I discovered an audio issue that was caused by electrical interference through my outlet that was actually causing my microphone to pick up radio static. I actually think this was discovered first by some of you during my GRE prep live streams. So you have my apologies for the video going up so late. So let's go ahead and jump into some definitions for this video. So first we're going to begin by defining what we mean when we say that a first order differential equation is linear. Now at this point we've already defined what it means for a differential equation to be of first order, so we're going to go ahead and define what it means for a differential equation to be linear. So we say a first order differential equation is linear if it could be written in the form y prime plus a of x times y is equal to b of x. So if the differential equation can be written in that form, it is linear, and if it cannot be written in that form, it is not linear. For our second definition, I'm going to be giving you a general solution method for all first order linear differential equations. And that comes by way of this formula here. So keeping in mind our definition for a linear first order differential equation, when a of x and b of x are continuous, the following is a general solution method for first order linear differential equations. So we have y is equal to one over alpha of x, where this alpha of x is our integrating factor, which we'll define in a moment, times the integral of alpha of x times b of x dx. And as I just said earlier, Alpha of x is known as the integrating factor, and we have the following definition for that. Alpha of x is equal to the exponential of the integral of a of x dx, where by exponential we mean e to the power of that integral there. So now that we've laid our groundwork, let's go ahead and get into some examples using these definitions. So for number one, we are going to determine if the following equations are linear or not. I've chosen these two equations because they are very similar in an attempt to nail down exactly what we mean when we say an equation is linear or not, so we can see the very clear differences between these two. So let's begin by recalling that definition. So linear differential equations are of the form y prime plus a of x times y is equal to b of x. So we want a single y prime, and then added to that, we want a function of x times just a single y, and then that can be equal to any function of x. So Let's look at the first equation and see what we have. So we can see right away that this equation is not in the proper form as we have y prime all by itself on the left hand side. It looks like on the right hand side we might have just what we need in order to demonstrate that this equation is linear. So let's go ahead and subtract that sine of x y over to the left hand side, which will give us the new equation y prime minus sine of x times y is equal to e to the x. Now we can see that this equation is in fact linear now that it's written in this form, where the role of a of x will be played by this negative sine x, which is being multiplied to the y here on this term, and the e to the x will be playing the role of b of x. So we know that this first equation is linear. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at our second equation. Our second equation is y prime is equal to x times sine of y plus e to the x where we flipped our x and y on that sine term. So we can see here, no matter how we rewrite our terms, on that right hand side there, we are never going to be able to get a function of x multiplied by y. And because of that, it is impossible for this second equation to be linear, as we are stuck with that sine y there I've underlined in red. So now that we have this basic understanding of linearity, let's go ahead and move on to trying some problems with our formula. So for number two, we are going to want to solve the following differential equation. We have y prime minus 2yx is equal to x. So hopefully you guys can easily identify that this is in fact a first order linear differential equation. And with that in mind, we can identify our a of x to begin our general solution process. So for this particular equation, the role of a of x will be played by minus 2x. So if you recall, our definition for alpha of x, or our integrating factor for our formula, is the exponential of the integral of a of x dx, and we've just identified our a of x. So we can write a definition for the integrating factor of this differential equation as alpha of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of minus 2x dx. And that's going to be a rather trivial integral to solve. The antiderivative of negative 2x dx is of course negative x squared. So our integrating factor for this differential equation will be e to the power of negative x squared. Next, let's use this value of our integrating factor to solve for y using the formula I showed at the beginning of the video. So we have y is equal to one over alpha of x, which is our integrating factor, which in this case is e to the negative x squared, but because it's one over 
e to the negative x squared, we can just get rid of that minus sign in the exponent and we will get y is equal to e to the x squared times the integral of alpha of x times b of x dx. Well, in this case, alpha of x is e to the negative x squared, so I'll write that down, and then we're gonna multiply that by b of x, which in this case is just x. So our integral will be of e to the negative x squared times x dx. And in this video, I'm not gonna go into the specifics of solving these integrals, but I will tell you the solution. If you would like to go through the specifics of the integrals shown in this problem, feel free to do that for homework and post about it in the comments. So once you evaluate that integral, you're going to get negative one half e to the negative x squared plus a constant c. And that whole thing is of course being multiplied by e to the x squared. Now our e to the x squared and our e to the negative x squared are going to cancel out, which will give us just a negative one half. And the only term we will have with an x in it will be when we multiply our e to the x squared times that c. So our final solution for this first order linear differential equation will be y is equal to c times e to the x squared minus one half. So let's go ahead and look at our third problem for this video. So we have y prime plus y is equal to sine of x. So in this problem we have a y prime, but we only have a single solitary y for our second term. So you might be saying, is that a problem? Do we not have an a of x for this problem? But we do in fact have an a of x for this problem. You can see we can write that y as one times y, where one will take the place of our a of x for this problem. So using that as our value for a of x, let's go ahead and solve for our alpha of x. So we're gonna have alpha of x is equal to e times the integral of one times dx, and that's obviously just going to give us an x, so our integrating factor for this problem is just going to be e to the x. So let's go ahead and plug that integrating factor into our formula. We will have that y is equal to one over e to the x, but we're just gonna write that as e to the negative x using the trick I told you guys about on the last problem, and that's going to be times the integrating factor times b of x, and our b of x in this case is sine of x. So our integral will be e to the x times sine of x dx. Now once again, I'm going to skip over this integral here, but I will go ahead and tell you, you will need to use integration by parts two times to evaluate this integral. And once you do, you will get the following definition for y. We will have that y is equal to e to the negative x times what we get from our integral, which is one half times e to the x times sine of x minus cosine of x plus a constant c. Now, as we've seen is sort of a pattern with these types of problems, the e to the negative x and the e to the x are going to cancel. So we're gonna get an e to the x from our constant c and that is all. So our final general solution here for this differential equation is going to be y is equal to c times e to the negative x plus one half sine of x minus one half cosine of x. All right, for number four right away, we can see it looks a little bit scarier. We have a bigger coefficient in front of our middle term there for our y and our b of x looks a lot scarier, but don't worry, the solution method is going to be just exactly Exactly the same. So our a of x is going to be this big fraction here where we have 1 plus 2x squared over x and our b of x is going to be everything on the right hand side of this equality here where we have x squared times e to the negative x squared. So that means our definition of alpha of x is going to be e to the power of the integral of 1 plus 2x squared over x but we can split that fraction up into two parts where we have 1 plus x plus 2x squared over x and just the same we can split it up into two separate integrals so we're going to write that here we're gonna split up one plus two x squared over x into two integrals, the integral of one over x dx plus the integral of two x dx where the x squared went away due to the denominator once we split it up. But both of those are really easy integrals to solve. The antiderivative of one over x is simply the natural log of x, and the antiderivative of two x is just x squared. So that means we can write alpha of x as e to the natural log of x, which is just going to be x times e to the x squared. So our final integrating factor is going to be x times e to the x squared. So let's go ahead and plug that integrating factor into our formula. So we will have that y is equal to one over x times e to the x x squared. You could write that in the numerator with a negative power if you want to, but I'm going to leave it here because it might cancel some things out later. So we have 1 over x times e to the x squared times the integral of, well let's see, our integrating factor is x times e to the x squared. And on the right hand side of our equation up there, for our b of x we have x squared times e to the negative x squared. Well, that means that our e to the x squared and our e to the negative x squared are going to cancel, leaving us with a very pretty integral to evaluate there. And that integral is going to be the integral of x cubed dx. Well, of course, the integral of x cubed dx is x to the fourth over four plus c. So we will have our integrating factor times x to the fourth over four plus c. So multiplying that through will give us our final answer and our definition for y. We will have that y is equal to x cubed over four e to the x squared plus c over x e to the x squared. And that brings us to our fifth and last problem in this example video. 
So we want to solve the following first order linear differential equation. We have y prime minus three over x squared times y is equal to one over x squared. Really quickly, I'm just going to identify our a of x and b of x there. Um, and let's go ahead and solve for our integrating factor. So we have alpha of x is equal to e to the integral of negative three over x squared dx. And that integral is going to be equal to three over x, which is pretty easy to verify. Um, so our integrating factor for this problem will be e to the power of three over x. So plugging that into our formula, we will get that y is equal to e to the negative three over x times the integral of e to the three over x times one over x squared dx. And once you evaluate that integral, you will get uh, negative e to the three over x over three plus c. And finally, we can multiply through by our integrating factor to get our final answer. We will have that y is equal to c times e to the negative three over x minus one third. And that's a good place to stop.